Yes, so in a plot twist, the MD Anderson trained person will be presenting the upfront surgery uh, <laughs> perspective. So uh, I appreciate um, the opportunity to be here today and to debate Dr. Maelstrom. And I especially appreciate that uh, she and I were able to communicate beforehand. And so she gave me a little bit of a clue as to where she was headed. Let's see. Do I not have the mouse? You're going to use the, this thing. Oh, got it. Okay, I have no financial disclosures. As I mentioned, I do have the disclosure that I trained with uh, one of the experts in the use of preoperative chemotherapy, Dr. Nick Vote, um, and I drank the Kool-Aid, so I will be, this is a good exercise for me in presenting um, the evidence that, uh, that often I'm uh, arguing against. <clears throat> So um, I'm going to try to go through a few of Dr. Maelstrom's points and talk about, um, often using the same data, um, how we might draw different conclusions uh, for patients with resectable uh, uh, colorectal liver metastases um, and argue that upfront resection may have a role. <clears throat> um, so, and then most importantly, kind of after I do that, I want to review the existing retrospective and uh, prospective data on the relationship with preoperative chemotherapy and overall survival. So it's been um, suggested that preoperative chemotherapy allows for a test of uh, tumor biology. Um, and so by being able to assess for a radiographic and pathologic response, we get prognostic information. Um, but I think we're seeing now that within the um, setting of molecular profiling, we actually are able to understand a lot more about tumor biology in a much more immediate fashion by looking at the molecular profile of tumors. And so as Dr. Maelstrom illustrated, we know that KRAS um, Mutant tumors have a worse prognosis, and we've seen that in this initial study from Memorial Sloan Kettering in 2010, which has then been repeated um, in multiple uh, single institution uh, studies since then, <clears throat> and confirmed in a meta-analysis. And so KRAS mutations gives a lot of prognostic information up front, as does BRAF mutations, which, um, which we also just covered. So additionally, we're learning more about um, ctDNA, which is an emerging um, prognostic marker, um, which can have a role in the metastatic setting, either before resection of uh, colorectal liver metastases or after as a measure of um, minimal residual disease. <clears throat> and so this is another uh, potential opportunity for uh, an immediate assessment of tumor biology and patient prognosis that, that will be effective and I think uh, will play a role in helping us to better individualize treatment strategies and identify patients, some of whom may benefit from a preoperative chemotherapy approach and some of whom, for whom that may be um, unnecessary and over-treatment. <clears throat> So the next question is how often does treating with preoperative chemotherapy actually change the planned resection? And so there's no question that there are some patients for whom treating with preoperative chemotherapy clearly allows you um, to, to shift from doing a planned major hepatectomy to a, doing a minor hepatectomy, but there are also patients for whom the planned resection would not change. Um, and so I think um, to illustrate that, here are a few examples. The, the um, scan on the left illustrates a um, solitary tumor that will require a wedge or partial hepatectomy that likely will not change significantly with the use of preoperative chemotherapy. <clears throat> and the lesion on the right uh, will likely require a right hepatectomy regardless due to tumor location. And so, so although there are situations where it may downstage the tumor enough to shift um, the, the planned resection, there are also um, obviously situations where it may not. So in terms of optimizing resectability, it's important that we also consider um, the impact of chemotherapy-associated liver toxicity. Dr. Maelstrom mentioned the risk of steatohepatitis, um, which we see most commonly with urinotecan. Uh, we've also seen that oxaliplatin is associated with sinusoidal obstruction syndrome, um, which has a questionable impact on morbidity, but clearly the arenatecan effects of steatosis and steatohepatitis have an impact on uh, postoperative complications, and so that is something that's important to consider, especially in patients uh, for whom a major hepatectomy would be required. Uh, I, I will argue that I think disappearing colorectal liver metastases are a problem. I wouldn't not worry about them. Um, <clears throat> and so going back to the, the uh, dinosaur data that, <laughs> that Dr. Maelstrom mentioned, um, we do know that, that in patients with a complete radiographic response, that most of those patients still have evidence of disease, either macroscopic or microscopic or um, early recurrence. And so these tumors are still there. Um, <clears throat> and so... In patients that are getting preoperative chemotherapy, if it's a small lesion, it's very possible that, they, that 
um, we'll see complete radiographic response, especially in tumors that are one centimeter or less. And so there's now kind of a um, more common practice of, of placing fiducials for tumors that are a centimeter or less in size. There's added cost that is an extra intervention, um, but it does allow for marking uh, in order to identify the lesion at the time of resection. <clears throat> Dr. Maelstrom did a, a very nice survey um, of surgeons internationally about their practice related to uh, disappearing colorectal liver metastases. And interestingly, only 24% of surgeons are regularly placing fiducials for lesions less than one centimeter. So if we're, if we're treating a lot of these patients with preoperative chemotherapy, that's a lot of potential lesions out there that were, that were made disappear and that we're not um, resecting. So then the question of does Treating with neoadjuvant chemotherapy uh, affect the R1 resection uh, margin rate. And again, I think the data for that is um, not convincing, even though biologically it makes sense that it should. Um, there's been a number of single institution studies um, or, or prospective cohort studies that have shown similar um, R1 resection rates uh, in patients treated with upfront surgery or with preoperative chemotherapy. And so I don't think that we can definitively say that that, that, that actually improves margin status. So the most important question is, does giving preoperative chemotherapy for resectable tumors improve overall survival? And so there's a couple of retrospective studies. This is um, Professor Rene Adam's um, International Colorectal Liver Metastasis Registry, where they looked at nearly 1,500 patients who had solitary metachronous uh, colorectal liver mets, and they compared patients who had gotten up to th three or more cycles of oxaliplatin or aranitecan-based chemotherapy with patients treated with upfront surgery. <clears throat> And they showed that postoperative complications were more common in the patients treated with perioperative chemotherapy, um, but that five-year overall survival was identical. Um, certainly, the risk uh, of a oncologic risk of a tumor may um, play a role. And so, in this um, study, they looked at patients and stratified them by the, the clinical risk score described um, by Dr. Fong. <clears throat> and showed that there did appear to be a, a survival benefit of preoperative chemotherapy in patients who were, had a high risk score, but no benefit in patients with a low risk score. So um, illustrating that there may be a role for preoperative chemotherapy in some patients, but perhaps not all. And then I imagine everyone in the audience is very familiar with the only prospective randomized data that we have in this patient population, EORTC40983, which randomized patients to upfront surgery or perioperative chemotherapy uh, with a primary endpoint of progression-free uh, survival, but they also looked at secondary endpoints of overall survival. So there was a um, modest but statistically significant benefit in progression-free survival with perioperative chemotherapy. <clears throat> but no difference on long-term analysis and overall survival uh, between the upfront surgery and perioperative chemo group. Um, and again, postoperative complications were higher in the perioperative chemotherapy group. So median overall survival was quite good, but in both groups. Um, so patients who underwent resection, 73 to 77 months uh, median overall survival. So in summary, based on the only uh, level one data that we have, progression-free survival may be improved with perioperative chemotherapy, uh, but it comes at the cost of increased postoperative complications and without a uh, demonstrable benefit improvement in overall survival compared to surgery alone. <clears throat> So to summarize, I think uh, we can safely conclude that obviously surgical resection with negative margins is standard. Neoadjuvant therapy may increase the postoperative complication rates, uh, but there's no evidence that preoperative chemotherapy improves overall survival. Uh, there's obviously good biologic rationale for perioperative chemotherapy, but evidence of a survival benefit is lacking, and patient selection is key. It may be warranted, but not in every patient. So I appreciate the opportunity to present a, a dissenting opinion here, <laughs> one that even dissents from my own often, but, um, and I look forward to the discussion. <laughs>